What's up guys, today I'm going to be going through 10 things to save your Unreal Renders. Okay, so the first thing I want to do, I've sort of exaggerated it a little bit just so we can sort of see what the problem is, right? So we have a still image here and it's really blown out, okay? And I'm going to sort of over the top a render of what this looks like right now. So you can sort of see the the lighting should sort of warm up almost, right? And that can happen for a few things. And I'm going to show you two of the main reasons to why and how we can stop that. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go to this. So show post-processing adaptation. That'll limit us straight down, right? You can see when we don't, when we're not in game mode, it still gets really bright. But when we're in game mode, we're normal, which isn't ideal. We want it to be the same throughout. So we go to this plus sign. We go post process. We add that here. The first thing we need to search for is infinite X bound. If I can spell that would help. And this just basically means that it affects the whole scene. So anything we do here will affect the whole scene. It won't just affect, you know, what we have. So we do this and then we sort of, I'll go negative one because I know this is a bit bright anyway. And then once we turn eye adaptation back on, you can see we are then limited back to where we were. And granted, if I turn it back off, we then get that disparity. So we want it enabled, but then we want to cap our exposure. And then this is a render of what it looks like with that effect. As you can see, granted it's darker, so then you'd light differently or you just affect the exposure compensation. But now you can sort of see that it's not warming up anymore. So we don't have that issue, which is great. And that's what we need. Okay, so just one more quick thing with this. Another way to fix it is by going to project settings and then searching for your auto exposure. This might actually amend what I've currently got. Your auto exposure here and just disabling it. This will do a similar thing that we have here, but obviously now we'll make a difference here. And when we do this, it'll still have that thing. But it's just an alternative way of sort of doing this whole thing. So, Fix number two is going to be over the MetaHuman Groom. You may not be able to see it too clearly in this because it's not too noticeable. But if you've got a lot of stuff behind your MetaHuman or your character with a Groom, it only really works with Groom, then you may notice that the hair isn't all in focus at points. Like some bits look a bit strange, some bits look a bit odd. And that's because of the depth of field depth of your hair strands. Now what you can use to fix this is a command which is r dot hair strands dot dof depth. Now this is going to make sure that all of the hair is rendered on the same sort of depth plane, which has its own positives and negatives. So I wanted to show you now what happens. So as you can see, we now get all of it rendered. However, the issue that we have now is that we get this like halo around our character, right? And there's a bit of flicker in there now as well caused by it. And I'll, I'll try and magnify in, but you can sort of just see where it goes a little off. So I personally have this, I don't enable this, but what you could do is do two different renders of the background and then the character using that DOF depth, and then you can comp them in post and then you'll get all of the hair in a lovely depth of field and then keep that kind of consistency of the background without having that weird little like outline of a character. On to step number three. Okay, so fix number three is about sims and grooms and all of that kind of fun stuff. So on the screen, you'll see I've got a bunch of different simulations going on. Um, if you try and render them normally, you'll sort of get this weird thing where they just start at the start of the render, obviously, because that's what it thinks to start. There's a, there should be a video playing now that sort of shows that and just, you know, it doesn't look right, you know, it doesn't look correct. So just a quick thing. These are from the Fluids plugin, the Niagara Fluids plugin. Um, they're just example tech templates and stuff that you can use just going through Niagara system and looking at all the templates. Um, but the way to fix that is by going to your sequence that you have any of them in or however you go about recording something out and you just get your sequence. And at this point you add a setting. So you click settings 
add a setting for anti-aliasing. And here in engine warm-up, you add however many frames you need uh, for the simulation to settle, right? Most of them need maybe two or three seconds to settle and start properly. So we're going to give it an extra second and we're going to go 100 because this sequence is at 25. So we're just going to do this and I will play in a sec the video afterwards. So you can see like a before and after, but we're just going to have a default thing here. We're going to set this to 25. We're going to save our project as we normally do. And when we click render, we can see it burns through the warm-up frames before it renders anything else. So by the time it renders, we get that, right? We get that, which is perfect. And that way, as you should be seeing now in the example, we pick it up where the, where the sim is already established so we don't see it start, which is what we want. On to fix number four. So fix number four is going to be anims potentially playing in your sequence when you don't necessarily want them to. So here I'm going to play an example of what I mean. So you'll see that this little demon guy, I don't want him to dance for, for a second, right? But at the start, he starts his dance and then he starts like to do the animation that I want him to. Okay, now this is a really simple fix. If you just select the guy in here, You'll see you've got your little set here. If you just click playing is false, then he won't do it until he's told to. So I want to show the obviously fixed render now, but as you can see, he's completely static until a second in, and then he starts doing his stuff. Okay, that one was nice and quick. Let's get on to fix number five. Okay, so fix number five is again to do with depth of field, but this time focusing on media plates. Um, I've not quickly been able to make a quick example to show that it doesn't work here, but if I can get permission to, I'll try and get some footage from work of issues we've had and how it's fixed it in there. Um, but basically it works on anything translucent or like a media plate or something. And what can happen is sometimes if you try and have really shallow depth of field, unlike translucent objects, it doesn't necessarily do it. Like it sometimes has a bit of blocky outlines. You can sort of see it doing it here, but not too much. Um, but I can still show you the ways that you go about fixing it. So here you'd grab what you needed, which I'd grab for first off our video playback. So on media player, you'd go into your, your material and then you'd search for transparency pass. So it's right here. Translucency pass. Sorry. Now, Trans, translucency and transparency normally get called out of depth of field, which is why sometimes it can look a bit weird. And I really hope I can get some, like, um, some examples to show you properly. If I do, then they will just be going on here. Okay, so fix number six is going to be pertaining to your camera cuts and getting shots out. Sometimes you'll notice you may already see what's wrong, but sometimes you may be in a rush or if you're doing multiple camera stuff here, you may have a moment where you go to render it and you go, that's my shot that you just saw. And then, oh, why is it rendering this completely different shot? Okay. So the way to fix this is very simple. Um, sometimes if you're doing your own cuts, you may change this, but by default, when you add a camera, it does actually add a cut with it. But basically what you need to do is you need to grab this. If it's not got anything on, you can either get it from camera, camera cuts, which is now actually blanked because I've got one and then come here, click add, and then add an existing binding. This will then have this, which was now showing it's a thumbnail showing that our thing works. And if I do this, you will now see that it renders our shot perfectly. On to fix number seven. Okay, so this next tutorial is gonna be sort of going around um, path tracing and just, a, it's a very extreme example as to what could go wrong, but it's just gonna show you what can go wrong depending on one main slider in particular here. Um, so the picture you'll see on screen right now 
is a path trace render, but it only has <laughs> one sample per pixel. Now you can see it's sort of got like a painted look to it. It doesn't look too, it looks strange, but it looks a bit cool in some kind of way, right? So we're going to go into Unreal and we're going to bring in our post process. If you don't already have one in your scene, you can go to your little plus sign here, add a post process. In here, you want to make sure the infinite extent is ticked, okay? And then you scroll down in your post process uh, and you go to your path tracing settings. Now you can amend all of these. Okay, what we have here and what you see in the picture is one, okay? Um, now give it a sec. And this is what it's like when it's at 2048. Now, don't get me wrong, it takes quite a while to calculate. I'm going to put in a little graphic just above me, but that's path tracing. But the more samples you put in, the more it'll be able to calculate light, basically. So you'll see a side by side now of one pixel, one sample per pixel to 2048 samples per pixel. On to the next fix. Okay, so this next fix is similar to the media plate fix. However, I've now managed to be able to get a decent example for it. And we're gonna use a character. So in this little sequence, you'll see I've got this nice little mid tight shot of a character create a character. It's really easy to do it with these characters, which is why I sort of chose to do it like this. Um, you can see it doesn't look too strange at the moment, but the second I push this focus distance even really close to me, like this or really far away, the eyes become really separate from the character, right? So basically, this is because of how the eye occlusion in this character is like sort of drawn. So this works for anything of that kind of similar thing. Like I said, this happens a lot with glass or media plates or stuff like that. So what you do is you go down to your, this is obviously a master material, but you go down into your material that looks like this. Uh, you click this and you see where you have all of this kind of stuff. You do the transparency pass, translucency pass, and you change it from after to before. So it's drawn before your depth of field with everything else. And you can now see that no matter where and how far it goes, it follows the character in terms of depth of field and it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. And this is useful for obviously if you're doing any focus pulls with characters that may have this kind of stuff where otherwise you'd have that kind of stuff go wrong. Um, we're coming up to the end of some of our things now. So I've only got a couple more fixes. However, on to fix whichever number it is up here. I'll see you there in two seconds. Okay, now this next fix is a bit of a strange one purely because of the example that I've got, right? So basically, what we have here is a line of baguettes, okay? But you can see in the top left, it says texture streaming pool over budget. And you can see pretty much every texture, like over in this area, is sort of very low res. It, it's it's almost like it's, it's basically over budget, so it can't give as much as it wants to it. So... I have purposely lowered this to show how to fix it. But by default, I believe that Unreal has a limit of like a gigabyte. There's like a budget limit like in, in shot at any one time. I could be wrong. Um, but the way that you can fix this is by manually setting it. Now you can do this in the engine files. And it, that could be better because you won't have to put it in every time you load up the game. But it can be very intrusive if you do that. So the way that you can fix it is by going into your little console area here, clicking R and then putting streaming dot pool size and then setting what you want. I But I believe this is in megabytes, right? So if I go 10,000, it's 10,000 megabytes. So if your GPU does not have that free, don't do it because it will crash your project, right? So if the original is, if the default is a thousand, I'm gonna set this to like, I don't know, 2000, right? And you can probably see that's now gone. All of these textures, now when I look around to them all, 
they've gone back to their full res and they're all back to normal. These are a bit strange, but I think they, those messages were just like that anyway. You can see our bread is now back to normal. Our side is now back to normal and all the textures look high res again. Okay, so this is another very, very quick fix. And this just pertains to textures, which is why I'm doing it right after this one. Um, if you have a look at this like milk carton, you can see it might not look too bad, but if you pay some attention to it, you might see that the roughness of it is not right at all for like a milk carton, you know? The way that you, there are two ways that you can fix it, but the easiest way is by going into your material. This is a RAM file, so this has everything together. If you just have a roughness map, it'll work the same way as how you just generally plug it in. But you go to whichever file captures your roughness details. You go over to sRGB here and you just deselect it. This will prompt you to change it from a color to a linear color because obviously now it is no longer sRGB. And you can see that it's, you know, it's updated back to how it was. If we go to our thing, you can see that it looks a lot better and the roughness is now fixed. All right, so that was it for this video. Let me know if you guys have anything else that you might need fixing. Drop a comment on any problems you face when you're rendering stuff or any just general un Unreal queries and I'll see what I can do to try and help. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button. I'll see you all next time. Peace.